Mr Speaker, when Owen Paterson was on the ropes, the Prime Minister was prepared to rip up the entire rule book to save his jobs. P&O workers want to sh- him to show the same fight in relation to them. The government had advance warning of these mass sackings. A memo was sent to the Transport Secretary and to the Prime Minister's office, but they didn't lift a finger to stop them. Did the Prime Minister not understand the memo, or did he just not bother to read it? Prime Minister, I think what, uh, what the Right Honourable Gentleman needs to rip up, Mr Speaker, is his pre-scripted questions. Answered. I've just answered the question, and the, the, point, the point at issue, the point at issue, Mr. Speaker, is whether or not the government was properly notified. And it doesn't, and it's not about what happens the previous. Evening. I knew about it on the Thursday it became public. But the, the company concerned has a duty uh, to notify the government 45 days, uh, Mr. Speaker, before they take action of that kind. That is why we're taking the action that we are to protect hard-working people. And what we're also doing, by the way, Mr. Speaker, this month is lifting the living wage for all workers across our country uh, by another £1,000. So it's up £5,000 since 2015. Yes, I think the Prime Minister just said he knew about it on the day. Yeah. I take it from that answer the Prime Minister didn't read his WhatsApp briefing. Surely not. Let's test his rhetoric. Mr Speaker, since the Prime Minister came to office, P&O have received over £38 million of government contracts. And the parent company, DP World, is lined up for £50 million of taxpayers' money under the Freeport scheme. The government is apparently reviewing these contracts, but reviews don't save, li- save jobs. Can the Prime Minister guarantee, guarantee that these companies will not get a penny more of taxpayers' money or a single tax break until they reinstate the yes. workforce? Yes. Mr Speaker, I think what the House has already heard is that we are taking legal action against the... Against the yes, we are against the company concerned under, under the 1992 uh, Employment uh, and Trades Union and Labour Relations uh, Act, and that is the, the right thing to do because it seems to me, Mr Speaker, that they have broken the law. But if he is asking, if he's asking this government to do what Labour usually wants us to do and actively pitchfork away investment around the country from overseas, Mr Speaker, then that is not what we will do. We'll take him to court, we'll, we'll defend the rights of British workers, what we will not do, Mr Speaker, is launch a wholehearted campaign, as they would want, against overseas investment, because that is, that is completely wrong and wrong for those workers, Mr Speaker. Yeah.